Hi, I'm Taylor, and I want to talk about budgeting for a venture capital fund. Now, when people ask you questions about venture capital funds and budgeting, it usually comes down to a couple of key questions. I'm going to try to like survey the most important ones from them. First thing they usually ask is, how big should my fund be? What's the appropriate size for it? And that's, that's a much more detailed qualitative decision, much more than quantitative. It really fits your capacity to raise capital, the strategy for the fund you're executing, stage you're investing at, number of checks you need to get to your portfolio diversification, follow-on strategy. Multiple fund strategies. There's a variety of concerns there that are, that are kind of outside or exogenous to the actual kind of model per se in terms of what the right size for a fund should be. Second one to think about is how should I budget for new and follow-ons? Again, strategy consideration. What your strategy for this fund uh, in terms of whether you should invest in the follow-ons is going to be very to turn upon the actual stage you're investing into, the geography you're located into your follow-on, your capacity to get pro ratas in your investments, your multiple fund strategy, your goal for this fund, whether to do lots of deals and show a track record or whether it's to invest into your winners. There's a lot of trade-offs involved in all, in all of those. And so there's a much deeper strategical question around what, what your allocation should follow and should be. Usually we do build a portfolio construction in the model to try to illuminate the strategy. It says if you do allocate certain funds that budget for follow-ons, what does that look like and what does that mean in terms of your capacity uh, for new deals, but also in terms of the actual follow-ons, given your the given amount you're kind of putting in. The other thing that comes down to budgeting is, okay, well, how much money can I invest? Now, invested that's invested capital, and it's basically less than paid in capital or total capital that you call for investors because the fund has to pay fees. And the fund pays a couple fees. One is management fees, obviously. Management fees that are paid by the fund to the management company that's managing the fund that's usually based on either committed capital called capital or assets under management and typically the way that the way that works is committed capital is just the total fund size it's a total like say for this example a 25 million dollar fund so each quarter or each year or whatever period period that is you'll call capital from your investors and you'll take in a fee that is measure it to the percentage you've contractually agreed to charge your investors under your limited partnership agreement that charge it based on committed capital or total fund size. And you usually do that over a time period and you usually have a fees that are set over that, that, that time period scale. For like a simple model like this, if I'm kind of manage that out, I basically say, okay, what's the total time period that, that I'm operating the fund that I'm charging fees for? For example, 10 years, 2% per, uh, 2 per year times 10 years, 20%. So then 20% 20, 20 of the fund comes off to pay for management fees to the management company that is not invested. The other, there are two other methods of doing that. One is called capital, which basically says, I'm just gonna pay fees based upon how much is called per period. And the other one is asset center management. Assets are management meaning what's the value of the invested capital that I have that's that's currently currently invested. So, you know, as you have exits, obviously your, in, your amount of, of asset center management is gonna increase your make investments. It's going to decrease when you have exits, decrease when you have write-offs. It's common to also have a mixture, so charge um, different percentages over time. So it's very common to charge a higher percentage earlier on, especially if you're in a committed capital schedule. Charge a higher percentage earlier on, have that percentage go down over time. Um, just because basically you're probably most of the work being done in the fund is being done in the early years. During the later years, you're not actively investing in the fund, so there's less support. So there's a rationale to charge less fees. The other one is you can you can vary the actual methodology that you use to calculate fees. It's very common to charge a fee structure of a committed capital for the first like four or five years, whatever that deployment period is for initial capital, um, and then charge assets under management uh, thereafter. Now, charging under assets under management can be a difficult thing to actually on a model. It becomes hard to budget for like fees. How much should I actually budget over over time? We'll tackle that in a different in, in a different uh, video. So the two other kind of major components of fees that often come up is organizational fees and then operational fees. Organizational fees are just setup fees, legal fees, accounting fees, uh, fund formation doc fees. A portion of those can usually be charged back to the fund and not to the management company. The other one is operational fees. People always ask us all the time, why are there fees charged to the fund on top of it? What's the What does the management company pay versus what does the fund pay? Usually the fund pays for fund administration, tax, audit. Those are things things that are, that are charged there. That are the fund. The fund, as its entity, has to be managed by a fund administrator and has to pay has its own taxes and audit and everything of requirements. And those are typically charged to the fund on top of the management company. And so, when we're budgeting for invested capital, 
what we're really trying to do is say, okay, well, if I have a total amount of fund that's going to be committed minus organizational fees, minus operational fees, usually per year over the time period I'm going to charge, uh, the fund's going to be operational, it's going to incur those fees. And then management fees, the period of which my, my LPA, my limited partnership agreement actually kind of specifies that I can charge fees for, my, minus all of those, comes out to invested capital. You do have, a, you can sometimes, uh, under many agreements, you can recycle your management fees, meaning as you get kind of proceeds back into the fund, you can recycle them back into the back end of the fund, which increases your total invested capital. So there is a capacity to kind of change that as well around how you handle the management fees and expenses part. But in general, that's how we kind of look to kind of forecast invested capital. If you have questions, happy to help.